gentlemen, what I'm showing you here, and I'm going to show you later in the video, a slow down time lapse of the spinning cube of the sun simulator. I said before my other videos, I just want to show you in slow motion. I'll go into much greater detail of what we're looking at in the collaborating evidence. This indeed is a cube. It is the black dot that we see in our cameras. This is slowed down to one quarter speed of the actual video. I'll show you this blindingly white. I'm going to ask the YouTube subscriber to show me what kind of camera, how it was zoomed in, if any filters were used. It doesn't look like any filters were used. But she is looking right down the barrel of the sun simulator. Hello, everyone. This is Nabir Watcher. It is July 9th, 2017. I am on Eva Healy's YouTube channel, and she captured something that really grabbed my attention about the sun simulator. So I'm just going to get right into it. Is this further backs up everything we've known so far and this was very revealing video of the sun simulator let's just watch so it looks like we have a spinning cubicle mirror in the air i'm just going to continue watching this whole thing one minute, 17 seconds, a spinning mirror. I believe we also have a lens in front of it, which helps focus this energy. We're, I believe we're looking through the lens and directly in line with this dot. The alignment that this person has is very rare to be looking right down the barrel of the sun simulator Fresnel lens, which is a spinning mirror this coincides with everything i have videotaped so far pretty amazing let's look at the other mork also collaborating evidence that goes with this so here is some photographs i've been sitting on from a subscriber and i'm sorry i forgot your name but i didn't have enough collaboration to be able to use these photos if you are watching this please tell me I will give you the credit so let's just watch some of these photos that appeared from this mirror on someone's garage you are the lucky person <laughs> that this thing goes through and scans goes goes across the earth look at this progression of photos look at this thing rotate this is again black and white photos of the same mirror as it's rotating on this person's garage here are some more photos we can see the lines the on this giant actually apparently not too big we can see as this mirror is revolving look that it's basically yellow in nature wouldn't that be gold reflectors here we have another one i'm going to quickly go through we can see the this will totally collaborate with everything we've seen so far so i'm going to put um, yeah, never mind that. These are taken from the house. This is as it first started coming through the uh, on the looks like a sunrise, and then here we could see the square sun. And these aren't as compelling. And then we have one last one here. Again, if you are the one that did. Whoever had done this, I forgive me for not remembering who had sent these photos, but I did save them. Thank you very much. Again, this is the same spinning Fresnel lens on an infrared telescope. This mirror would be basically cool spinning. How was it mounted there? I have probably a double axis gyroscope looking thing, which I have a picture of. And again, it was, which I believe was probably 
held on by this device. We see an axis here and here, and this thing probably rotates. And they hit this thing with light, possibly from a group of mirrors or lasers. Again, um, to see the cone-shaped light, I believe we're looking at, as we're looking down the lens array, actually, hold on a second. Let me show you the patent idea. This is, I believe, the reflecting back to the light. That's the light that's coming. Go back and look at this, but this light source is coming through here. This is the object that's spinning and bouncing this light back down to here. And this is spinning to the sill, hoping that we don't see it. It does send a narrow cone of light that we see. This is the black dot. The black dot we see, like on this video. This was from the Zion Warrior. Watch him zoom in on this again. We can see the cool black dot as he zooms in on this dot, which we now know is a cubical mirror. At some angles, a cube would actually look hexagonal too. Let me see you get him to zoom in on this. We'll get right here. Yeah. So the trolls and debunkers would say that that is a camera that is causing it to overload. But that is blown out of the water with that myth because here we see the black dot rising on a sunset reflecting on the water. Let me fast forward this. Here's the black dot again. And we see it reflecting on the water below. So uh, we know that this thing is real. It's being in front of the sun. And then from the Steve Olson Scott channel, this is what was captured on the same similar device on with an analog camera capturing the same thing. This, I believe, is the Fresnel lens in front of it, which scatters the light, I believe, in front of the cube. And then the reason why we have the uh, fake sun, I believe this is the reflector dish that reflects the light onto the spinning cubicle device. And then we see that images over an FAA camera and around the world, this hexagonal mirror because of the source of light it's coming from the bouncing the spinning mirror. The cone-shaped light that we see is, I believe, coming from these cones of light. I believe this would be the black dot. We're not, it's not in alignment with it, but these would be the black dot and the cone shape. I believe it might have two sides of this spinning Fresnel lens, but we can watch this thing rotate as well in front of it and the sun, a rotating sun flare. Yeah, okay. You need to wake up, people. This thing is real. It's really out there. Why is it out there? Well, perhaps I'm going to, this is why it's out there. This is a Fox Dark Sun Halo. And here we can see the, I want you to focus your attention on a few things in this picture. I want you to notice the outer diameter of these halos never changes, but the diameter of the inner fake sun does. And we could see when high altitude clouds or make it look smaller and low altitudes make it look bigger. Notice the changing diameter. If that would have been the true sun, it would have never changed in size because of the angle of light that approaches the earth. I also want you to notice to see how whatever object is now eclipsing the light is no longer, it's not even a balanced halo. Look, we've got more light on this side and less light down here. This is over Fox News. Yeah, you're looking at a eclipse. And now, just like in my demonstration, we have a real sun and a fake sun like the flashlight, and then we get chemtrails in front of it like this paper, high altitude demonstrating that light is changing the diameter of the sun according to the altitude of the clouds. That again would be impossible. 
unless it was a smaller, more clo much closer source of light. And for those of you who still might be new to this eclipse, if a planetary body goes and blocks our sun, they turn on the simulator and I believe they can dim the brightness up and down as well. And so when we have an eclipse, they turn on the fake sun and then we get the sun halo like we saw in that Fox News time-lapse video. And at a certain point during this halo, there will be a loss of heat. No, the sun simulator does not create heat. It's smaller. The real heat of the sun can pass through the sun simulator. We still feel it. it doesn't block the heat. But we feel a heat loss when it gets eclipsed by another celestial body. So one more thing about the lens array, but we also see evidence of the lens array and the sun simulator with the, the rotating cubicle mirror now we've discovered. Watch the reflection of this thing bounce from this oscillating light as the sun simulator passes from behind the lens array. Focus here and here. I believe this again is because of the spinning cubicle mirror in a very timely, rotating manner in a time-lapse video over Australia. And the lens pedal effect from the sun simulator. Anyways, please copy, like, and share. And progressing forward. Begin to see this halo. Now, what I want to point out is that the halo is it's not a perfect halo around this object. The distance between here and here is quite great as compared to here and here. As we progress forward, gets a little better, but the distance between here and up here is still far greater than here to here. My point is that that may be an object behind here, and it's not until here that the camera has caught up. And we've got an object right there. Take a little closer look at it. This white blob is not our sun. It is more than likely a sun simulator. We then have those objects that I just showed you come out the other side. All right, so we'll take a closer look at this photograph. Right here. Zoom in on those objects a little bit. That's what we get when we enhance them. So, it's just uh, noteworthy. Anomalous, seen on many ancient tapestries,
So we'll just add it to the bucket of evidence of anomalous things happening. We also have striped chemtrails. So there you have it. We're at Hearst Southeast in Canada. And we, were, we are going to see the same halo concept here, despite all these weird things. But the fact that we've got light coming from behind the halo here confirms to me that that in fact, something obfuscating our real sun. I also find the uh, stripes in the sky going like this to be a bit unusual. Normally clouds go across the sky. However, when we have seen that brown dwarf, or whatever the heck it is, we do see slanted stripes on that object. So this is consistent with that sort of thing. This is swift current in Canada looking to the south. And I want to draw your attention to this guy up here. Does not look like the moon. I have not checked the, uh, the moon charts. Interesting. And this is Lethbridge South in Canada. And this is further proof of the halo concept where I believe this is a large object. This triangle is is obfuscating the uh, what the shills shiltards would call a uh, sundog, 
but that's not a ton dog at all. That's actually the light coming out the side. Here again. And the large halo. And this is Lethbridge in Canada, uh, looking to the northeast. And well, first off, we have a very, very orange object there. And we see the chem planes, chem trails coming out. It must be trying to hide something, right? More obfuscating technology. And here we have something coming out the side of of uh, the object that uh, we've been showing. This is on the left side of the object that is obfuscating our real sun. We're now at Drumheller, looking to the south in Canada. And following the theme of the day, which is an eclipsing object, eclipsing our real sun. Well, first off, I want to draw your attention to, to this right here. We can see a very textured, very textured surface. And I'm going to Hone in on that a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It appears that you can actually see craters and very textured surface here. I do realize that there are clouds here. However, as we progress along here, you're going to see what appears to be the object that is eclipsing and requiring the need for a NASA sun simulator who has a patent with Ocean Lum, I believe it is. We can see some of the obfuscating technology, these, these triangles. The uh, color has always been somewhat pink, which matches the coloration of the halo or eclipsing planet. Perhaps a translucent gas giant. backwards. And going forward one more time. Chemtrails.
Crow's Nest Pass, looking to the southeast. We're going to see a rather luminous sunrise. Back up. Okay, so look at these chemtrails. What are they trying to hide here? Sorry, just uh, thought I saw something that I wanted to look at, so I backed up. Okay, more chemtrails, triangles, weird things. However, it's not going to prevent us from seeing what we want to see. The light coming out the side of the halo. All right, so uh, <laughs> I'm almost speechless. I am speechless. We are at Salmon Arm, looking to the southeast. We're in Canada, getting closer to the west coast of Canada. And, well, we have orange. And we have this over to the left of it. We see chemtrails. Lots of chemtrails. We see this object here, which one would think that would be the sun. Under magnification, we do have a little red object to the left of whatever that is. We have more chemtrails. We begin to see our signature halo that seems to be the theme today. Also note these uh, streaks, which is interesting. Ah, and there is our eclipsing planet Helion, I believe. Lots of chemtrails here. Trying to hide it. Sorry, guys, but we have figured out your obfuscating techniques. And for those that are awake and willing to see what's truly happening, it doesn't work. However, you are succeeding at not waking up the masses, which is the panic that you're trying to prevent before you declare martial law. So we understand what you're doing. We don't like it, but Kind of interesting that we have well, the triangle, <laughs> whatever the heck that thing is, and then uh, some stuff coming out there. 
don't know if there's much to see in there, but I did kind of notice something there, and then in the next picture it appears to be so. Well, let's see. There could be many things flying around, and we have a blue object up here. I don't know if that's just a flare or something. We see that blue object a lot. It does have a triangle on it. We also have a triangle over this little object and something back there as well. So I think uh, the theory of the gas giant planet Helion being in front of our real sun with this octagonal fake NASA sun simulator in front uh, is well proven. Thanks for watching.